Hello, I'm Oliver from Mechanical Creations. In this video, I'll walk you through the build process of my latest automaton, a pirate and cannon piece that tells a short story through mechanical movement. I've built a working prototype and produced 10 editions here in the workshop, each assembled by hand for machining and crafting components to final assembly. I filmed the entire process and I will show you how it all comes together. Along the way, I'll explain how some of the parts were made and how each contributes to the final performance. The idea began with the fascinating story of a British naval officer, Thomas Cochrane, and gradually evolved into a playful pirate and cannon scene. The mechanical design was created in CAD, while the prototype character was crafted and decorated by hand. I began with the main box, crafted from American ash. I buy my timber as rough sawn boards and process it here in my workshop. For this build, I chose to mill the panels flat using my CNC machine rather than the planar thicknesser. Both work well, but the CNC gave me more control for this particular job. Once milled, I machined out the bearing pockets, mounts for the cam followers, and various holes for other components. The box is glued together and finished with a wax oil blend for protection. On the underside, I've added rubber studs. They help the box sit better on the surface and give it a cleaner look when slightly elevated. Before installing the bulk of the mechanics, I added a few components that are easy to fit at this stage. First, I pressed a wire staple into a set of location holes at the bottom of the box. This will guide a nylon thread, which I'll explain later. On the right hand side, I inserted three pairs of bearings into their respective holes. It's a tight fit, which keeps them secure. I used pairs rather than single bearings for added stability. I gave them a quick wipe to remove any residual oil as the oil can seep into the timber and leave unwanted stains. These bearings will eventually support a gear train. Next, I attach the character's legs. They're fixed with machine screws from underneath the top section of the box. His left leg is tightened fully, while the right, a peg leg, remains loose to allow for the animation. I'll go into more detail later in the video about how I made the character. One of the larger components is the bellows. This was my first time working with air in an automaton, so it was a bit of an experiment. I had to estimate the size needed to expel an object from the cannon. Originally, I wanted an airbag to burst out with bang written on it, but the prototype didn't generate enough pressure, so I opted for a lighter object to fire instead. It took a few tries to get the accordion fold right. Initially, I used masking tape on paper, which worked surprisingly well, but wasn't suitable for the final version. I switched to a self-adhesive book binding material. It looked good, and when stuck to brown paper, formed clean creases. To streamline the process, I plotted the crease lines in CAD and used the CNC machine to score the back of the material. I inserted a static nylon rod into the spindle with the spindle switched off and it worked beautifully. I then used contact adhesive to bond the material to the two wooden end pieces, completing the bellows structure. Four threaded rods run through the bellows, fixed at one end, which support the springs. I made the springs myself in the workshop. They're easy to form on the lathe using the screw thread function to create a consistent spiral. Locking nuts hold the springs in place and allow for the tension adjustment. To operate the bellows, there's a pair of racks. A hole runs through the bellows to accommodate a set of sliding tubes, which control another part of the automaton. The bellows are mounted from the top of the box using machine screws and spacers. I did run into an issue. The bellows struggled to close under tension of the four springs, which prevented the rack and gear from engaging properly to draw in air. I didn't want to remake them, so I looked for a non-destructive fix. I could have used stronger springs, but I didn't want to add more pressure to the mechanisms. I suspected the adhesive layer was limiting flexibility, so I carefully heated the bellows with a heat gun to soften the adhesive then clamped them shut while they cooled. That did the trick, and now they hold their closed shape. There are five cam followers in total, each mounted in the same way. I started by inserting a shaft into the lever of the cam follower, with two washers placed either side to prevent lateral movement. The assembly is then positioned in the box and secured with brackets on either side. 
One follower controls the cannon's rotation. Before installing it, I attached a collar to the follower via a wire linkage. Two other followers work together to operate the fuse and the other pulls the cannonball back into the barrel. The final cam follower, fitted with its own linkage, animates the pilot's arm. Now I'm inserting the three gears cut on my CNC machine, along with their shafts, into the bearings I housed earlier. I've applied a dab of medium strength Loctite retaining compound to two of the shafts to prevent them from working loose. The gear teeth were meshing a little too tightly, so I gave them a light sanding to ease the fit. One of these gears connects to the crank handle, which I've shaped like an arrow to indicate the winding direction. The smaller pinned gear drives the main shaft and it takes 18 full winds to complete the automaton's performance. In the prototype, I didn't use this gear train. The handle was connected directly to the main pinned gear, but that only gave me six winds and the performance felt rushed. Next, I'm fixing one of the two timber supports into the side of the box using brass screws. These supports hold the two main shafts, each with bearings. I managed to snap the head off one screw. Luckily, the broken piece was protruding and easy to remove. Unfortunately, I didn't learn my lesson. I snapped a second screw and this time it was buried. I had to gouge it out, fill the hole and then drill larger pilot holes to avoid a repeat. I also remembered I forgotten to add a Teflon bush earlier. It's fitted into a machined brass tube, although in the video you'll see it made from aluminium or aluminum, which is used in the prototype. This bush is fixed to the underside of the main box using two part epoxy resin and holds the part in place. Laid out now are the cams and gears, each fitted with brass collars and secured using M4 grub screws. I begin by inserting the first shaft into the rear support. Onto that shaft, I add a nylon washer, followed by the smaller of the larger gears, and then a double-sided cam profile. I make sure the cam followers are seated correctly into their pocketed profiles. Next comes the large pinned gear with a single-sided cam profile. These use needle rollers, which you can buy separately from the bearing. To insert them, I've made a guide that lets you drop the rollers into place and press them in using a vise. This gear connects directly to the drive handle that powers the automaton. Finally, I added another double-sided cam profile to complete the first shaft assembly. For the second shaft, I first insert a line and fix the two intermittent gears that engage with the bellows rack. Then I slide in the shaft along with the larger gear and nylon washer. I follow that by adding the second support, which holds the opposite end of the shafts. This support includes a nylon roller screwed into place that prevents the bellows rack from disengaging from its meshing gear. With everything in place, I secured the gears and the cams, carefully aligning them in their correct timing position. I use the orientation of the grub screws as a guide, all aligned in the same direction. Tightening them is a bit fiddly. Some are tucked away, so it's more a matter of feel than sight. Now I'm fitting the copper tube that directs the air from the bellows into the cannon. It also supports an internal brass collar, soldered together for strength. It's a tight fit into the bellows, and I make sure the copper tube passes cleanly through the collar from the cam follower assembly. At this stage, I'm just confirming that the airflow works. Profiled into the top of the box is a partial torus, part of the thrust bearing that supports the cannon's carriage. A plastic cage separates the six ball bearings. The copper tube fixed to the bottom of the carriage fits through the top of the box and shares the same torus profile, allowing it to seat smoothly on the bearings. The collar from the cam follower assembly is inserted over the carriage's copper tube and fixed into place with a grub screw. Next comes the fuse theatrics. This mechanism operates through two brass tubes, one nested inside the other, each with a fine slit cut to allow a nylon thread to pass through. At the end of each brass tube is a silicon tube. The large one represents the wick and the smaller one is the spark. Fitting the spark tube was tricky. I had to tie a thread to it and gently pull it into position. These brass tubes are fed through a copper pipe fixed to the bellows and emerge at the other end where they're clamped to the cam followers. I inserted a temporary wire into the slots to keep the tubes aligned. This alignment was crucial for the next step. Assembling these parts was challenging, so I did it off camera, 
but to demonstrate I used spare components to show you how they come together. Now I threaded a nylon cable through the slot in the brass tubes all the way to the bottom end. To assist I used a wire with a hooked end, pulled it back through with a nylon thread and routed it through the wire staple along the slot, around the shaft and back through the cam follower. Finally tying it off at the staple. This action pulls the thread connected to the cannonball back into the barrel. Let me show you how I made the cannon. It starts with a block of lime or basewood. I cut it down the center into two halves. Inside I machined the barrel profile. The halves were cleaned up and glued together using location holes for precise alignment. The cannon was mounted onto the rotary fourth axis of my CNC machine. I began with a roughing cut to remove bulk material followed by a finishing pass using a 2mm ball nose bit. Once shaped, the cannon received a couple of coats of primer and was decorated with an airbrush. The brass tube for the wick needed to be curved. I made a round former, annealed the brass, bent it around the former and cut it to size and inserted it into the cannon. The two brass pivot anchors were made from tube and machined caps, soldered together and inserted on either side. Finally, a steel rod is inserted at the base of the cannon. This engages with a collar that fits snugly over the copper pipe. As the carriage rotates, the mechanism lifts the cannon barrel. Before mounting the cannon onto its carriage, I threaded the nylon cable through the barrel and the wick through the top hole. I made two brass brackets from strip, punched holes on either side and placed them over the pivot shaft, securing them with screws. Finally, I tied a black pom-pom ball to nylon threads to represent the cannonball. Okay, I'm having a little issue with the pom-pom ball. It's not actually being spat out to what it should be. Um, and I think this is because of the nylon line that I'm using. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap it out with a, an even more delicate and hopefully a little bit more flexible line. All I'm gonna do is knot it to the end of this line and then just pull it all the way through. And so hopefully that will solve my problem. Next up is the shaft that animates the character. I bent the thinner end into specific positions to help articulate the movement as it travels up through the pirate's body. The opposite end is pushed through the Teflon bush, held securely in place by a fixed collar that prevents it from slipping down. At the end of the shaft, I attached a small pinned gear, which engages with the larger pin gear that drives the character's motion. Now onto the pirate himself. This part of the build is a little bit different from the rest as it wasn't designed on CAD. For the prototype I began with a rough sketch of what I wanted him to look like then moved straight into cutting, carving and sanding each individual body part making sure they worked well together mechanically. His arm needed to pivot upward and rotate outward so I designed a discrete linkage mechanism at the back to enable that movement. The rest of the body parts are loosely connected, allowing the internal shaft to animate the pirate. Once I was happy with the function, I primed the parts and decorated them using a combination of airbrushing and hand painting. For added detail, I used cotton thread for the hair, foam to trim his clothing, hat and other details. When it came time to producing 10 identical characters, I needed a way to replicate him faithfully. In the past, I've used moulding and casting techniques, but that method has its drawbacks. So I explored a new approach and invested in a 3D scanner to digitalise the parts. These digital models can then be carved using my CNC machine either on the rotary fourth axis, which allows the workpiece to rotate during cutting, used for the hands, legs and head, or on the flatbed in two halves, which are used for the body and arms. There are some limitations. Parts with undercuts or blind spots can't be fully carved in one go, but those areas can be redefined by hand afterwards. The pirate's body is assembled using pins. A central shaft runs through both the torso and the head, with a grub screw at the back securing the head while the body is mounted onto the legs and pinned firmly in place. To finish things off, I added a few extra details, a pyramid of cannonballs and some rope detailing around the cannon for visual flair. That's him complete. I will leave you with a final performance. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.